Hey, this is Marcus Slimonis. I run a multi-billion dollar company and host one of the most successful business shows on TV, where I use my own money to help small businesses succeed. On my podcast, we're going to talk to entrepreneurs who have great, inspiring, and sometimes unusual stories. We're also going to talk to celebrities who have launched successful ventures of their own. From them, we're going to get inspiration and inside stories of their business success. Look, you never know who's going to show up or what you're going to hear. This is 100%. As I said before on this podcast, I love clothes. I love fashion. But there's one item of clothing that's the foundation of literally any outfit. And it's often overlooked. Now, they may only flash to the world when you sit down, but your sock choice will say a lot about you. When my next guests decided to start their sock company, they really did their homework. And I mean, literally did their homework. You want to know why? Because at the time, they were six and eight years old. I'm Marcus Simonis. And this is 100%. My next entrepreneurs are brothers, Brandon and Sebastian Martinez. And their obsession in socks? Well, it grew into a business. Are You Kidding Socks was born in 2014. And its co-founders, Sebastian and Brandon Martinez, well, we're lucky they're here with us today, along with their mom, Rachel, who's the president of the company. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi. 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 You're wearing a shirt that says Columbus Mom. Columbus Mom! Wait a minute. You guys are going to go to Columbus High School? I'm already going. Are you a freshman? Yeah, I'm a freshman. So let's back up for a second. I am from Miami, Florida, for those people that don't know. And I went to an all-boys Catholic high school called Christopher Columbus High School. But this is mind-blowing. My grandmother has a chapel there. And so the chapel that's in the B building has my Genevieve Abraham. That's my grandmother. And then we're building the new STEM building out by the track, by the football field. And the fact that you are a Colum- oh my gosh, this is, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> so what I want to start with is I want to hear from you guys on what the company is, how it started, because in every good business presentation, you got to give the who, what, where, when, and why. So who's going first? So I'll go first. My name is Sebastian Martinez. I said I'm from Miami, Florida, and I'm the CEO of Are You Kidding Socks? And I'm Brandon Martinez, the director of sales for Are You Kidding Socks? I'm also from Miami, Florida, and I just sell the socks. And Sebastian, how did you end up becoming the CEO? My grandma worked at Nordstrom, and every day she would bring me like one new pair of socks every day, and it was the best. I always loved socks and just the high, cool, and funky socks. So my mom asked me one day if I wanted to start my own company. The CEO name, because like that's my role, mainly because I like started and designed socks. Because you're the founder. Yeah, basically. And then your brother, tell me how your brother joined and tell me how that all works. So I joined this company because at first they went to a local shoe store down here and they wanted to go sell socks. So Sebastian was really, really shy at first because he was like six years old at the time. And at that time I was just eight. So my mom knew that I like to talk to people all the time. Like I would just go up to random strangers and be like, hi, what's up? And she was like, hey, you want to try to sell socks? So I go there and I do fantastic. I was like, you know what? I like this job. Brendan, who are you more like, your mom or your dad? Uh, mom, I because uh, mom. my mom, you sold stuff. And- oh, yeah. And Sebastian, are you more like your dad? Yeah, I'm basically more like my dad. Yeah. Meaning one is quiet and one has a big personality? Is that how I... Well, now I'm not... I'm not as quiet now because when I saw Brandon sell socks, I followed him and now you can see I never stopped talking. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, Brandon and Sebastian, I don't wear socks. You know why I don't wear socks? Because I'm from Miami. And it's hot. (laughs) Who came up with the name? Well, my mom did because every time we go sell socks, my mom would say that we make the socks and then the people were like, are you kidding? So that's where our name came in and it's also like said, it's a kid company. Are you kidding? So it kind of all, it was perfect. I have to tell you that I think the name is great, but I think the designs are even better. They're bright and they're playful and they make all of your friends ask where you got them. How many years has the business been out there? More like six years. And what's the total revenue? Yearly? Yeah. Yearly, we're selling between five and 600000 a year. Five hundred six hundred thousand dollars, or five or six hundred thousand socks. Five to six hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a lot. 
Sebastian, walk me through the premise of the company. Like, what is its ethos? You know what ethos means? Not really, not really. It's okay. What's its purpose? Like, when you start a company, some people start it just to make money. But behind all of the financial things are the reason that the company exists. Mainly, it was to put smiles on people's faces by buying these cool socks. Where'd that idea come from, Sebastian? We saw, like, the pink ribbon, how it means for breast cancer. So we were thinking that we should start making socks for charity so we could give back to those who are in need. You know, I give a lot of socks, and the first thing that I always do before I give them to somebody is feel them. I want to feel the weight of the sock and the weight of the yarn and how tight the yarn is. I want to see the quality of the yarn. And the way that you know the quality of the yarn is the vibrance of the color. If it's cheap yarn, it doesn't absorb the dye properly. And every one of these socks looks like a box of crayons. And what I mean by that is the colors are so bright and so distinct. The fabric is so soft. There's a really nice stretch to them. The quality of them is unbelievable. Why did you choose to go with such a high quality sock? Well, because the, the higher the quality, the better the sock and more people want to get them. And the more people that we have buy our socks, the more money we can give back to charities and to give back to people in need. So do me a favor, Brandon, walk me through the business model of what you just described. So we have a sock. What does it retail for? How do you integrate charities into it? Well, first of all, we have to go to a manufacturer and manufacture a sock. So each sock costs around like... Hey. He didn't ask it that. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, well, mom, I'm going to. Okay, so there you go. Okay. How much does each sock cost? About yeah, around. You don't have to give me the exact number. Okay. Landed about a dollar. About a dollar. Okay. And and they're made overseas, correct? In Guatemala. In Guatemala. Okay, great. Okay, keep going. Well, first of all, we make the design and then email it to them. It's like, hey, this is the design we want. And our mom has been there the, to the manufacturing place. They do a really fantastic job there. You can tell they really try. And once we get them, we charge about $10 each. And we also have a three pack for kids that we charge $15. And what we do is that we go to like events, schools and sell them there. And we also have our own online store, rkingsocks.com. Just a little plug in right there. That was like a shameless plug. You just popped that thing right in there. So once we do that, you know, we sell and we also have our own nonprofit as well. So like every sock we sell, we try to give a sock back. So say we sell 5,000 socks, we donate 5,000 socks to the Bahamas when the hurricane hit. So one sock is $10. How did you determine that that was the right price? Well, we just looked at like prices of all these socks and they're like, all right, let's see what the market is like. There's another reason why also we chose $10. So when selling socks at school as fundraisers, it's easier to get a parent to give a child a $10 bill and they just take it to school. It's just 10 is a perfect round number for somebody to not say no. They feel like they're worth $30. I'm just being honest with you. They feel that premium. And I know that nobody can feel them, but they feel that premium. So $10 is a value. I worry about the three for 15. So Sebastian, walk me through as the CEO why you thought that was a good idea. Well, the three for 15 is mainly for kids, like babies, like five-year-olds, because we don't have the three packs for adults. I was starting businesses of my own as early as 12 years old, and so I learned a lot about money pretty young. And that's done me well ever since. Look, I think it's a great skill to develop while you're young because there are still adults out there struggling with money management. Now, teaching it to your own kids can be easy with GoHenry. GoHenry is a debit card made specifically for kids ages 6 to 18 to help them learn good financial habits early on. It's easy for kids to use for making purchases, but it can also be easy on the parents. They can use GoHenry's app to make transfers, limit spending, and receive real-time notification about their child's use of the card. Look, I love this company's mission because I think it's never too early to learn how to handle your money. GoHenry allows kids some fun and independence in doing that, while still ensuring parents feel safe and in control. Get started at GoHenry.com and get one free month with promo code MARCUS. That's one month free at GoHenry.com, promo code Marcus. Learning about your money? Well, it's never too early to start. 
as summer starts to come to a close, we all have these long lists of things we're trying to squeeze in. Well, do me a favor and make sure that one of those things is securing life insurance. You learn how Policy Genius can help you cross that one item off your list in no time. Policy Genius lets you compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all at once. You can save 50% or more on life insurance. That is, you could save $1,300 or more per year by comparing quotes with Policy Genius this way. Their licensed experts work for you, not the insurance companies. So you can trust they are really on your side and they're going to find you the best deal. And they'll handle all the paperwork for free. No extra fees. Look, getting started is easy. Head to policygenius.com and eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week thanks to an award-winning policy option that was recently ranked number one by Forbes. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, well, it's nice to get it right. Sebastian, one of the things that I want you to work on as you move forward, because I find you to be this big, bright light with enthusiasm and knowledge, is that I want you to really start to perfect your story because your mom knows the story, your brother knows the story. And as you continue to grow and the company goes from, you know, 500,000 to 5 million to 15 million, which it's going to, right? I'm 100% sure because you're from Miami. We don't do anything small there. You have to make sure that you know the answers to every single question. And just like when you go to school and you know the answers, because I'm sure you get all A's mm, not really. with a few B's weaved in there. Yeah. And the occasional C. Yeah, I got like one C. Me too, brother. I used to have more than one. So you're doing better than I was. Okay. Now, before we talk about doing a business deal together, I want you to talk with a dear friend of mine who can help you refine your pitch. He's an actor, he's a producer, an entrepreneur, a former skateboarder, and a TV personality. He's known for his roles in the shows Robin Big, Rob Deerdick's Fantasy Factory, and Ridiculousness, which is on MTV all the time. Welcome to Ridiculousness, I am Rob Deerdick. Now, Rob's taking the funniest internet videos and breaking them down like only he can. <laughs> it's like, first of all, you never want to see a man with this haircut, a chainsaw, and a handful of beer. <laughs> you ever heard of Rob Deerdick? I've heard of ridiculousness. Please welcome Mr. Ridiculous himself, Rob Deerdick. Yo, what's up? What's up, pal? How you doing, my man? Really good. How you doing? So we have two entrepreneurs here. Brendan and Sebastian. Hello, I'm Brendan. How are you doing? I brought you on this show so they can pitch you on their business. Ah, okay. 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 And so you guys have a 30-second opportunity to meet a serial entrepreneur. And one of the reasons why I wanted Rob on is because he truly exemplifies the balance of good business and good family. He launches new products and he's a grinder. And so he doesn't like BS and he wants you to know your numbers and he wants you to know your answers. And when you don't, He's going to be tough on you, so don't get mad, all right? You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, go ahead. All right, so hi, my name is Sebastian Martinez. I'm the CEO of Are You Kidding Socks? And what Are You Kidding Socks is, it's a kid-owned company where we design socks, and we also work with a lot of charities because we love helping those who are in need, like breast cancer, autism socks, stand up to cancer, type 1 diabetes socks, and we make many more so we could just help donate back to those in need. And we also have our own line of kids and adult socks where you can go on our website at areyoukiddingsocks.com and see what we got. I love the fact that they're thinking about conscious capitalism because I'm a capitalist, Rob's a capitalist, we like to make money, but Rob's also a super generous guy. And so when he makes money, it's not about him hoarding money and keeping it for himself. He does a lot of things for people. And the fact that you two young men understand the importance of having a business not only make money to provide for your family, but to provide for other people is the kind of thing that Rob and I as investors, we want to hear that. Awesome. Awesome. And so what type of capital are you guys looking for? And why are you looking for capital? If you're doing $600,000 in revenue, why bother? Don't help him, mom. I don't know what he really means by capital. Money. Money. Oh, okay. Mom, stop. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, before we could go on, why did the younger brother become the CEO and the older brother become the director of sales? I'm the CEO because 
My mom knew I had this passion for soccer, so she asked me if I wanted to start my own sock company. Obviously, I said yes, and I went to the table, started, started designing socks, and I'm the CEO because I'm like the founder of the business. <laughs> so you and your brother are not considered co-founders, or are you guys considered co-founders? Well, I don't really consider myself a co-founder. I really consider myself a director of sales because I really sell the socks, but I still work with the company. Hey, do you get a commission on sales yourself? Well, every year we get a, a salary. You get a salary. Who owns the company? Who owns the company? My brother, I guess, it's his CEO. You have no equity? Well, Sebastian is just rolling in like, I'm the boss. This is how it's going to work. <laughs> My mom's here to help. My brother sells. I don't pay anybody anything. And, and basically, that's how we roll. Is that right, Sebastian? Yes, that is how we roll. Okay. <laughs> So, Rob, let's get into some real questions if they actually were pitching, because I think it's important for them to go through this exercise. So, first off, the big, the most important number is going to be the delta between what the sock cost you, what you sell it for, and then what percentage of that you give away to charity. Every sock is $10 each, so we give about 30% back, so $3 per sock sold. Okay, so then how much does it cost you if you sell it for 10 how much does it cost you to land it in Miami for you to sell it? Well, per sock, to make a sock and land it is $1. $1, and then your shipping costs, you just add another dollar? Well, I don't really know about the manufacturers because that's what my mom does. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, so, but you believe at whole you're still netting $5. No, no, no. I'm not letting Rob just skate over, no pun intended. When I hear I don't know, that doesn't work for me. And mom knows all those answers and she's dying right now, sitting there. She's dying because she wants to answer it. The problem is your mom isn't gonna be there every single time and it isn't her responsibility. Okay, I want Rob to tell you a little bit about what he does and why he's asking these questions because he probably gets more pitches than anybody I know. I've started companies with 18 year old geniuses that skipped Harvard and left their first year at Harvard to build a company with me and 50 year old hardened executives. And the truth between them all is they're learning and learning and learning. And every bit of experience that you get uh, just allows you to evolve and understand your business better and better and better. When I look at a business, I look at who the target consumer is and how big that potential audience is. I look at what type of storytelling can I provide and give them to get to generate the sales that converts them into customers. And then how do I keep them as customers for as long as possible, right? And all of this has to be built on the foundation of great unit economics as it relates to the margins and the costs and the shipping and all of these things. I'm exhausted. Those are a lot of big words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't have to pitch you on some idea that I had. Here's what I want to tell you guys that's probably more important than anything else we've talked about today. You have a family business. And the fact that it's a family business and you guys have such respect and love for each other is the basic building block of any good company. Rachel, what does this business mean to you for your kids? So I come from the advertising sales world. One thing that I can do is sell. And I've been able to teach and educate my kids. I mean, it's mind blowing sometimes when I see it because people ask them questions about what they do and they're pulling out their business cards and just getting people's information. Because regardless of what field you go into in life, you have to be able to sell yourself. Whether you're going to be a gardener, whether you're going to be a doctor, whether you're going to be a chef. I went from the corporate world literally to nothing because I wanted to work with my kids. Boys, is she strict? Yeah. Right? But she's providing leadership and she's giving you those real world skills. And I better never hear of a day where you guys are taking that for granted. Because without your mom, this business, the doors are closed. Yes, because she teaches us everything we need to know and how to do stuff, how to succeed in life. So she's definitely a role model. And she's also really good at making breakfast. I mean, let's be honest, family businesses are the hardest kind of business in America because it can get awkward at a moment. And when Rob started asking about why you're the CEO and I started asking about equity, those are the kind of conversations that make the room awkward. No, it is. It is. And we've cried together. We've laughed together. We've been rained on together. Like We've shared so many special moments. But 
the keyword is together. And we've done everything together. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a family business with heart. But at the end of the day, they're learning what it actually means to build a company. And they'll probably build four or five companies in their lifetime based off of having this extraordinary foundation. So, you know, I commend you as being the, the mom chairman in the background. Thank you. What'd you learn about your mom today? I learned, well, I've always known that my mom gave up everything just to work for us. Whoa, 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 whoa. But Rob, you want to clear it up? What was wrong with his sentence, Rob? Because you know I'm about to come through the screen. He did say <laughs> she works for us, but hey, that is the, that's a CEO's mentality. Let me tell you how it really is, Sebastian, just because you and I, I'm telling you, we're going to be friends. I promise you, you work for your mom. And I don't care if you're 55 years old. And Rob knows this, right? When our moms say this is the way it's going to be, there's no discussion. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be managing that mother-son relationship till the day you die. Well, I've known it, but she gave us everything just so I could work with her. <laughs> I changed it up. We quit from her very good job for working for Televisa so we could have this opportunity. And she's taught us so much. Rob, what do you say? Should I do a deal with them? I think there's no doubt. Okay. So we're going to do two projects together, and each of you is going to work on one. Sebastian, okay? Okay. I want to order 5,000 pairs of socks with lemons on them for my foundation, okay? Okay. And Brendan, I want you to design 5,000 pairs of socks for our high school, and we're going to donate them to the high school, and they're going to sell them to raise money because I want you to understand that you can find opportunities to create value for people. And the more that you can customize things for corporations and for nonprofits and for things like that, and it's okay for you to make some money on that. And you become known as these guys who sell amazing socks, but also do really good things. So do we have a deal, 5,000 and 5,000? What's the price I have to pay? Because remember, I know what they cost. They're at least $10. I ain't paying you $10. So 5,000 times 10, that is 50,000. We're not doing $10. I'll pay you $5 a pair for each of you. So you make some money and then you're going to give the organizations a chance to make money as well. How's $5 a pair? Yeah. <laughs> you can negotiate if you don't agree. If you don't agree with the number, negotiate. That's, there's nothing wrong with negotiating. Nobody's going to be offended. In fact, I'll pay you $4 a pair. Okay. No, what's wrong? No, no, no. Fine. No, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> So instead of four, you want five? Yeah. Are you sure that's right? What are your margins going to be? Margin percentage. Don't look at your mom, as in like the money that you're going to make. I don't really know. That's okay. When you send me my order and you send me the invoice, I'm going to pop quiz you. And if you don't answer the questions, the order is going to sit there until you answer the questions. Okay? Okay. Is that a deal? Deal. The last request I have is that your brother really is a co-founder. He doesn't have to be the CEO, but he doesn't have to just be the sales guy. Because when I asked you a lot of questions, he answered a lot of them. He's your wingman and he's your brother and he's going to be there thick or thin. Okay. I am super. I thought you guys did incredible. Very impressed with your journey so far. I started seeing people create companies when I was their age and it planted the seed that I would go on and create companies. And, and I just know how valuable that was to me at that age that really helped me out. And I just know how much they're learning right now is, is you know, most people get these lessons when they're starting their first company post-college. It's amazing. And I think you're very lucky to get in front of a, a man like Marcus and provide this opportunity. And I think it's just the beginning of the rest of your lives. Okay, guys, thanks for coming on. Thank see you. you. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. You. Rob, when is Ridiculous back on the air? When are you making new episodes? We're shooting 250 next year. Signed a deal for 500 over two years to get to 30 seasons and 1,000 episodes. Is there a sweet side to Rob Deerdick? Oh, I would say, you know, I would say I'm 50-50. I'm sweet. 99.9% .9 of the time with family and wife. You know what I mean? I just harden up for business. If you had to start over, what would you do? I would dedicate a lot more time to just free thinking and, and keeping my body perfectly flowing and, and spending a lot more time in nature. Uh, but I don't know, maybe when I'm older. It sounds like you'd be a nomad. Yeah, maybe. All right, brother. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. 
you know, I love family businesses. Those two young men, Sebastian and Brendan, truly understand this idea of aspirational goals. But they also have a lot to learn. And I was tough on them. And I was tough on them for one reason. Being an entrepreneur is not about what age you are. If you want to sign up for the big show, you got to be prepared for whatever the results are and whatever's going to come at you. They will never, ever forget that they always need to be prepared with their numbers. They'll be better tomorrow than they were today. And that's ultimately what my goal is with this podcast and how I live my life. Thanks for joining me. This is 100%. This podcast is hosted and executive produced by me, Marcus Limonis. It's executive produced by Nancy Glass and James Balash. Produced by Joanne Cosro and Andrea D'Ambrosio. Other members of the production team include Andrea Gunning, Ben Fetterman, Lindsay Livingston, Carrie Hartman, Elena Karmazin, Thomas McClellan, Madeline Cole, Samantha Jacobson, and Brittany Vuzo. Edited by Matt Del Vecchio and Blake Maples. And the sound mixing's done by Dave Saya. A special shout out to Gotham Studios in New York City, Elliot Lanham at Hidden City Studios, BAM Studios in Chicago, and MIBE Music. 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 Music.